Hello everyone. With the recent news of frequent leopard sightings around Bangalore outskirts, there are many rumors, unrelated WhatsApp videos, some great experts giving their WhatsApp gan to other innocent civilians. Instead of getting information from those WhatsApp forwards, let us learn some basic information about leopard as a species. What is the nature of leopard? why their presence is so vital to human survival from thoroughly researched materials from eminent scientists and conservationists i recently presented this to few very enthusiastic kids and adults in my society some people joked for wasting my two days time to prepare this presentation to mere 10 to 15 audience among those 10 to 15 people even if one person went out of that room with a positive mindset about leopards presence in our surroundings and spreads the knowledge among his peer group about the importance of apex predators in the food chain my every second spent on this presentation was worth it so here are the same slides presenting to you with the same hope i had on the other day leopards and how they are saving human lives the brief information that i'm covering here are the origins of leopards my personal story with leopards a little history of leopards what is the nature of leopard and finally how they are so vital to our very own survival Let me start with the origins of leopard. The chain goes like this. Kingdom Animalia has these substructures from phylum Chordata to family Felidae. The subfamily Pantherinae has two branches. One is Neophelis containing clouded leopard and Sunda clouded leopard. The other branch has biggies like tiger snow leopard jaguar lion and finally the leopard the scientific name of leopard is panthera pardus forgive my pronunciation if it is wrong i am a kannada medium student so the influence of kannada on english words is something that i cannot avoid rather i am proud my tryst with leopards Although I had curiosity towards nature, forest, animals since childhood, the craze of camera kicked in in 2018 when I visited Mysore with my friend's borrowed camera, Canon 1500D. My intention was to have our personal photos of that visit, but I happened to click the cage leopard in the Mysore Zoo. Something in me changed in that moment. My next visit to Bandipur forest where a few seconds sighting of wild leopard made me realize how would it feel to capture a photo of this beautiful beast in its own home That's when I bought my first camera Canon 700D went for first photography safari into Nagarhole forest with my two crazy friends It was in our second safari in the Nagarhole forest towards the end moments we had our first full fledged adrenaline rush when we heard constant frantic calls of langurs deer and even malabar squirrels our safari driver santosh for sure knew it was a leopard he stopped the jeep in the middle of the forest path within few minutes a mighty male leopard crossed the jungle path right in front of us For few seconds he stopped and he looked at us there was a perfect beam of sun rays acting as spotlight on him when he stood that became my first ever 
leopard picture in the wild those few minutes still run in my head so vividly and will forever stay there as one of the fondest memories of my life the wildlife photography craze had kicked in and there was no stopping from there it has become my obsession and will remain so for as long as i live from there i had few more memorable leopard moments in kabini part of same nagarhole tiger reserve then few times in bandipur although in wild tiger was the first big cat sighting but first photographed big cat was leopard and it has a very special place in my heart talking about history of leopards unfortunately leopards do not enjoy the glamorous status as that of their cousins such as tigers and lions both bigger cousins have their remarkable presence in mythological stories fables and in folklore however maybe due to their elusive nature leopards did not get that special attention in the history books the only significant value they had was in egyptian civilization where black leopard has been considered as a symbol of royalty the idol of young king tutankhamun on black leopard shows its significance in egyptian civilization coming to india the greatest economist and the statesman kautilya aka chanakya had regulated hunting of leopards in his book arthashastra he knew the importance of their presence in the ecosystem in 3rd century before christ the most famous mention of leopard has to be character bagheera of jungle book where black leopard are as famously they are now called as black panther has been immortalized into our childhood memories by rudyard kipling leopards did have notoriety as man eaters in british era the story of man eater of rudra prayag by jim corbett spotted devil of gumalapura by kenneth anderson will surely give you nightmares now let us learn about nature of leopard like their elder cousins tigers leopards are also solitary animals only during reproduction period male and female come closer female leopard mostly takes care of her cubs cubs stay with mother until they are of age 2 to 2 and 1/2 years post that they establish their own territory they are very territorial and mark their territory by spraying urine the sprayed urine not only conveys the ownership of that territory and acts as warning to the invading guests it also acts as a messenger between adult males and females when they are ready to mate leopards are considered as vulnerable species as per iucn red list arabian and persian leopards are in critically endangered status at least in india leopards are significant in numbers mainly because they not only can survive in thick jungles but also on hilly regions grasslands even in the city suburbs although forest department produces number of leopard as estimates regularly unlike tiger estimates leopard estimate is not close to reality counting them as accurate as possible is still a distant possibility thanks to its amazing camouflaging nature elusiveness and their presence in an unconventional area such as cities leopards can live in negative 30 degree celsius of siberia to the hottest arabian peninsula where temperature can reach up to 50 degree celsius as mentioned earlier leopards are camouflage masters probably the best ambush predator in the nature thanks to their skin patterns skillful and silent movements 
for a prey death is more certain if the hunter is leopard than if it was a tiger there are totally 9 subspecies of leopards in the world although this classification is debatable topic since some of the subspecies are now considered as part of same group for our simple understanding let us keep it at 9 only and make some experts furious their angry comments might help us in winning youtube algorithm war you never know indian leopard african indo chinese arabian sri lankan javan persian north chinese and amur leopards are those nine subspecies in common colloquial term in india leopard is commonly called as cheetah in many regions although it has a separate hindi word tendua many still call them cheetah so how many of you know the difference between cheetah and leopard the skin pattern on leopards is called as rosette the pattern looks similar to rose petals hence the name in african leopards the rosettes are thicker abundant and are circular compared to indian leopards indian leopards rosettes are a bit squarish like fingerprints rosettes are unique to each leopard and they can help in identifying each leopard but in cheetahs you can find solid rounded black spots they love to wear polka dots leopards have bigger heads compared to cheetahs cheetahs have visible black tear mark starting from the corner of their eyes to the edges of their mouth this is absent in leopards only big cats such as tigers lions leopards and jaguars can roar thanks to the unfixed ligament instead of fixed voice box but cheetahs have fixed structure so like our domestic cats cheetahs can only purr and hiss leopards have bigger waist and tubular long tail and cheetahs being the fastest four legged animals have aerodynamically designed lean body and longer flatter tail last but not the least leopards have retractable claws and cheetahs have fixed claws you can see proper claw mark in pug marks of cheetahs leopards keep their claws retracted while walking on their toes After discussing on cheetahs and leopards can we now address the black panther in the room along with that let us know about even rarer strawberry leopards i think after bagheera it is the most famous blacky the black panther of kabini who created furor in wildlife enthusiasts all over the world also he made kabini literally unaffordable to the middle class wildlifers like us Black panther is actually a common term used for black leopards and jaguars in general. The more correct term is melanistic leopard. When there is overproduction of melanin pigments in the skin, the skin of the leopard becomes partially or completely black, makes them more enigmatic. Although it is marvelous to human eyes, this genetic mutation has disadvantage for poor leopard since the very basic nature of camouflaging is highly compromised and makes hunting more difficult coming to strawberry leopards they are more correctly called as erythristic leopards in this case red pigment overproduction makes their skin more of a strawberry color Black leopards have been recorded in many regions across India. In Karnataka, the Kali Tiger Reserve seems to have more number of melanistic leopards. However, recorded observation of strawberry leopard has only been in African continent. Now, let us have a fun game. In these coming slides, there are some famous pictures of leopards or snow leopards. 
Let us see within 10 seconds how many of you can identify the camouflage masters. Put your comments below if it was really difficult or you have naturally gifted binocular vision. Here you go the first one. Did you find the way it is sitting purely blends with the nature. It seems even the photographer spent considerable amount of time in finding before clicking this beauty. Here is a relatively easy photo. Of course, there is snow, you have to find a snow leopard here. It was easy, wasn't it? Here is the last one. Try finding a snow leopard again. Did you find this? Or this? Or this? Were you expecting three? This is the beauty of camouflage. Mother nature is so enigmatic. Now we are coming to the last and most important part of our discussion. How leopards are saviors of human life. Before talking about leopard, let us discuss properly researched, well-documented study of another apex predator and their importance in natural balance. This is a story of wolves of Yellowstone National Park of USA. How they entirely changed the ecosystem of Yellowstone National Park. Over two decades, two scientists, William J. Ripple and Robert L. Beshta, did a detailed research study on wolves of Yellowstone. It all started in 1920 when the gun-toting Americans thought wolves were pests as a menace. So they decided and started wolves eradication program. Within no time, Yellowstone National Park had lost its apex predator completely. Elks, who were primary food source of wolves, had no more threat of wolves. Their number multiplied within no time. With their increasing number, their first and most important source of food was aspen trees. Elks literally emptied the aspen tree line around rivers, streams of Yellowstone National Park. When it rained, the soil was held by aspen tree line roots. Their absence directly led to soil erosion. Floods during the rainy season not only ruined soil ecosystem, when the rain stopped, streams and rivers disappeared as well. Land became hunting ground for medium-sized predators, also known as meso-predators like coyotes. Coyotes had field day and they hunted small animals such as pronghorns, rabbits, mice, near to local extinction. Yellowstone National Park became a barren desert. Understanding the mistake, they decided to reintroduce the wolves into National Park in 1995. Arrival of wolves brought the drastic change in the years coming by. Elk population which at that time rose over 15,000 came down to 6,000 by 2010. One would ask what if wolves kill all the elks? Truth is that's the beauty of mother nature and her true children. They only kill for survival not for fun. With the reduction of elk population, aspen started growing back and soon the streams started appearing, what was again seen in the park. Fearing the death, coyotes moved out of this territory and population of small animals started growing. Today, pronghorns are in healthy numbers, so are rabbits, mice, etc. With the increasing number of small animals, the dependent species such as hawks, bald eagles, vultures, magpies, ravens, weasels, foxes and badgers started thriving and helping in maintaining the ecological balance in the park. Along with aspen trees, 
other trees such as willow trees started growing around water bodies beavers nature's wonderful builders started building water dams around water bodies fish population waterfall population underground water level increase increase in the number of insects beetles etc is a direct result of presence of wolf in that ecosystem today one can observe over 57 species of beetles alone in yellowstone national park similar is the importance of apex predator such as leopard in the ecosystem similar situation was recorded in mozambique where leopards were completely eliminated during their long civil war later understanding the importance of leopards they were reintroduced from other regions we are doing similar experiment with cheetahs in india i am hopeful this might bring back old glory of indian cheetahs once again on our lands so as an apex predator leopard regulates herbivore population like wolves they regulate the number of meso predators as well meso predators in this case are jackals dholes caracals servals etc one of the best nature of leopard is this big cat is a survivor leopard is not choosy when it comes to its food menu leopard can eat from frogs birds reptiles hares porcupines dogs monkeys to even young goats hence it can survive in any circumstance if there is lesser human intervention there is this scientific term called diplo endozoochory diplo to endo stomach zoo animal cory seed the probability of seed germinating and succeeding as a healthy strong tree is very high when a fruit eating animal swallows the seed and it comes out as excreta the probability gets even more higher when such herbivore was consumed by a carnivore then such seed is passed through the stomach of carnivore and comes out as excreta even better a langur has natural territory of 247 acres and seeds can spread across such land if it was consumed by a langur however if such langur was eaten by a leopard this leopard has a territory of 141 square kilometers which is about 34841 acres imagine the spread of seeds in such a vast land not just trees by consuming graminivore animals such as hares leopards also help in spreading grasslands the half eaten remains of prey of such predators are later consumed by vultures hyenas crows insects and whatever remained later will act as nutrient to the soil tigers leopards wolves and such apex predators being at the top of the food chain maintains the whole ecosystem the forests are grown the rivers are flown oxygen is generated seasons are regulated and the world is in order there is another research study where it was declared that over 90 human lives are saved every year in suburbs of mumbai just because the leopards in and around sanjay gandhi national park are hunting their favorite and easy prey the stray dog unregulated haphazard growth of stray dogs has been biggest imbalance in the ecosystem thanks to human carelessness towards waste disposal illogical laws and unscientific court orders and special thanks to the self proclaimed good samaritan dog lovers 
with such boom in dog population spreading of deadly diseases like rabies dogs hunting for rare migrant wader birds hunting of critically endangered ghadial crocodile babies and ground birds such as great indian bustards are some of the innumerable examples of stray dog menace since leopards love hunting dogs since they are very easy to hunt this phenomenon is really helping in reducing the rabies menace dog attacking civilians and kids around mumbai suburbs such useful species are now being threatened by ever increasing global warming continued deforestation poaching of leopards for its skin claws is another big reason threatening the very survival of leopards construction of highways and railway tracks inside jungles and in turn ever increasing road kills and lastly mindless jobless social media professors who share unrelated fake information videos and have created an aura of fear about these marvelous species is a new and increasingly growing threat my sincere thanks to shri sanjay gobbi sir whose book leopard diaries is the main source of information for this brief presentation if you are interested in understanding more about leopards i highly recommend you to buy this book leopard diaries it is scientific yet very engaging read then my heartfelt thanks to my dear friend and a fellow jungle junkie shashi for his incredible clicks of leopards of kabini and bhadra let us hope we all understand the importance of presence of such animals and birds around us let us protect them from us thank you